Hi, how's it in the name of Christ? How you doing? It's a girl crank. Hey, one second. Yeah, I just wanted to clean my camera. I wanted to see if it would make a difference. Anyway, uh, I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're Stella, and I hope you're in a neat little bunch. Uh, like, look, I did slightly more today of my braids. Uh, this is gonna take all week, maybe even slightly over a week. I don't care, but bottom line is my hair is growing. Hallelujah! But I still have all this to do. I'm too busy though to just do this only, like the week has commenced, it's Monday. Uh, speaking of which, it is the 6th of May 2024, but it's not really the 6th of May, it's actually the 7th now because I've hopped over into the next day. Let me just put some caveats out there, kindly look out for my captions, they're not always accurate, they sometimes use a small g for God, uh, so they're not very reverential, sometimes they're misspelled, all that jazz. Um, it is what it is, that's just what we're dealing with. Okay, uh, one day in the future, God willing, I'll edit them. And then, there is makeup. I'm very potentially wearing app makeup. If I am, you'll know. If I'm not, you'll also know. Um, what is this? What do I want to say? Yeah, yeah, like it's it's makeup. You get my point. Like application makeup. And then I want to, I have a segment that I do that I just really want to get through. Because right now, it's half past two in the morning, guys. Because mm. I was doing shorts, I really, like I had not done them for a couple of days. <coughs> and when I don't do them... <coughs> my ministry just freezes okay so now here it is that i am where i'm at at this time and the sooner i get done with this message the better so the sooner i can get this segment out the way the better i'm trying to blush my cheeks to show you that when uh, you prick me I ble i've got blood in my body basically like if you roll me over with a steamroller i'll probably pass away i think it worked if it didn't uh whoops another day is another day is another day anyway let's just get straight into this message look i am exhausted with repeating myself okay i'm very tired of basically rehashing or reiterating the exact same curses that are slapping me from the occult i'm, I'm not about that business i'm not trying to be about that business but long story short the menace from america is at it again he's busy trying to see if he can't slip one in uh a, a member of my family i had a dream of us both being miserable just kind of going absolutely nowhere for the rest of our lives um just basically yeah keeping me stranded because they feel stranded in life yeah that's another thing and then i had a dream of some stranger uh essentially removing the makeup y'all i've done videos before where I don't put on makeup um I, this is it like I, this is what you see like this is what i look like when i walk up and down all right the only thing that that app adds is like eyelashes and like contouring of a nose basically what it is that real makeup would do in waking life that's what happens but in this dream this little witch that is a complete stranger somebody i don't know okay uh yeah i i removed the makeup filter that adds eyelashes and what have you yeah and yeah and like I, I i suddenly just look like 52 years old or something like 55 58 like i looked so old that i i feel like i'm even offending or insulting people in their 50s i i looked old like everything was just sagging like basically just kind of hovering below gravity i don't even think 50 year olds look like that i don't even think i think people start to look like that when they get to like my, like even my mom doesn't look like that and she's like 66 <laughs> so yeah basically when you start tottering towards 70 that's when you start to look like that i removed I, I didn't put on makeup using an app and then i just look like 70 all of a sudden whatever witchcraft that is done this is africa um I'm, I'm actually so glad that the most recent video that i uploaded actually as i had last night seeing as we're already in the 7th of may was about how it is that there is a reason i listen largely to american content creators when it comes to christian content in particular it's because african christianity which is not really christianity largely is cantankerous it's it's like it's got fur it's bubbling like a brook it's like effervescent like corenza sea it's weird it, 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 it's unbiblical but somehow they managed to find scriptures to substantiate all that heavy like legwork that they have to do this is what Jesus has to say. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. So I went literally, I, I flat out went on right ahead to deliberately attempt to offend African witches all up in my grill because a lot of them think they're classy, right? They have gotten businesses through this. They have, they drive big fat chunky Porsches. They live in chunky mansions. They have it all. All the girls are teeming at their folds if they're men and all the dudes are lining up to marry them if they're women they basically have it all good using the occult right and so their lives are glamorous they're fabulous as with the naked eye if they were to record a video on youtube they might just get liked for being a lifestyle guru or whatever those are people that are deemed or termed classy on the planet but frankly what they do is trashy and it lacks 
class. It's it's tacky. It's ta witchcraft is tacky. Okay, like, it's just tacky. It it, be, it it's ugly. It's really ugly. And there's nothing like the the stuff that people have to do in order to achieve all of these ornate shiny things, these showy things that they acquire. They have to do some pretty dingy things to get there. It's tacky. It's dirty. It's just really filthy. Yeah, um, but you, you know, people don't quite gauge it as such because it awards them things that make them look clean on the outside or worth the while, fabulous, amazing, or whatever. So I went out of my way to deliberately try to, try to offend these people by calling their kind of sorcery third world because that's exactly what it is. It's exorbitantly third world. It's, it's classless, it's trash. It's third world antics. And in Africa, the witchcraft that is practiced here is very much African. It's third world. It's like, it's giving guashiokor. It's giving scurvy rickets. It's giving malnutrition. It's giving drought and famine. It's giving camp, refugee, um, war. It's giving militia. It's given, it's giving failed state and like no clean running water it's giving cholera like e coli like witchcraft in africa is giving whatever might be all the issues that you might find in africa it's giving a uh, struggle for humanitarian aid to arrive because you're like some strange militia group in the tigray region in ethiopia it's giving third world it's giving hamas it's giving you're preventing the people in gaza from accessing humanitarian aid like that that's witchcraft in africa it it buries people it hinders progress in such tactless ways that it actually destroys the country it decimates the actual ecosystem the land it messes with the land itself it uproots entire countries I, the other day i described it as state capture it's like a state capture it's the selfish greedy breakaway organization that's working in clandestine fashion to basically take over a whole freaking country and the end result is just tacky it's like afghanistan it's like taliban you know how after joe biden pulled out like how it is that they were just chilling there with their machine guns in parliament i mean where have you ever seen Cyril Ramaphosa hanging out, like, at the union buildings, just carrying a machine gun or some, I'm your president. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that Idi Amin Aja be doing. It's giving third world. Your sorcery is third world. So I went out of my way to call it third world. Whether or not people are offended, they don't want to click on it, they keep on slapping me with, with sorcery, you are destroying your own countries, you're, you're like, it's, it's oozing, um, Haiti, you know? It, like I said, it's giving, wheat is not getting to the orphans. And so children are passing away from treatable diseases. It's giving rickets, scurvy, any kind of malnutrition you can ever think of. Guashiokor, protein deficiency. That is what witchcraft in Africa does. It impoverishes itself at the expense of, of course, everybody, however, at the benefit of a small number of people. And these randos don't care to create a cantankerous, chaotic, like stratospheric disturbance in their countries. They, they don't care because after all, they get to like bling something on X or bling something on Insta or bling something on YouTube, like what the heck, while your country is literally becoming a failed state, you are third world. It is imperative that you get called third world, because third world issues, the, the issues that we have out here in these African streets, lots of them are preventable, lots and lots of them are avoidable, lots and lots of them are fixable, insofar as people just did the moral thing, lots of people don't got to go hungry, lots of people don't got to be without homes, lots of people don't got to be without unemployment, without, with, with unemployment, like listen, okay? Like, just think about think about a spell to mess with someone's career, pulling the rug from underneath the feet of the project manager working next to you at MTN. Honey, you are causing unemployment. You're probably creating a mother that's not able to feed her children. You're causing the kind of disaster that you would find in the Horn of Africa where a mom has to bury a dead baby that is only four months old because she could not breastfeed because there was no more breast milk. It was just dust there because in and of herself, she's malnourished and she's been walking distances to try and get to the nearest like um, food aid shelter. And in the run up to the child passed away from starvation and thirst, malnutrition. And so here it is that a mother is just leaving their, 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 their corpse of a baby right there, unroot someplace. No proper burial, nothing of that nature. You're doing stuff like that. You're creating that out of like people that are living in middle class South Africa. Like I was a middle class South African. And if at all I had had a child, goodness gracious, I don't know how that kid was going to survive. Like people insist that I go and have children and stuff like a baby because I'm like, you no know, geriatric womb, biological clock is ticking, you're 39. Like all that jazz. And for me, it's like, okay, 
Where's my husband? Not anywhere to be found. Yeah, that's the thing. Third world type stuff. Like, out you're having babies popping them like no man's business without an ability to feed them. Making sure your breasts run dry and your baby gets buried on the side of the street. Buried, decomposed, eating by, eaten by cadavers. Eh? A Korean, your baby ends up by a carrion, sorry. To be consumed by scavengers, hyenas, like animals that are out here in and of themselves passing away from the drought. And when then they find the flesh of your baby, it's like, today we've had our lucky day. And you can even bury that baby. That, that is what you are creating <laughs> out of Africa. So you're freaking third world. You're third world. Like witches in Africa, you are third world. However, you think you have arrived. You think you're special. You think you're spectacular. Hey? You think you're that dude. Like, you, you, you think, like, thing. There's like a, a bling. Like a thing. Like, even a sound that goes thing when you rock up in the room because it's like a sparkle on the corner of your forehead. The way you think you've arrived. Because you know how to manipulate things in the cosmos and the spirit realm to give yourself everything you want at the expense of your surrounding neighbors that are living the lifestyle. The harsh one at that with a sultry, sunny, like draining, drowning, exsanguinating heat. Like the people in the Horn of Africa, but like it's right around the corner in Johannesburg. Like Papa, you are giving people out you're living in four ways. Like the kind of vibes that you would get, like I said, Haiti, in Haiti. Y you know, yeah, it's that like third world. Third world, failed state, um, military official, what is this, government officials walk around with like entire machine guns. Like guys, go look at Gaza. Only just go look at Hamas. Like Papa, they walk around, just look long rifles. Where have you ever seen that in South Africa in these streets? Just walking up and down, somebody. That is a, an official figure of authority. Long, like lanky, like rifle. You don't know if it's there to hunt deer or you. <laughs> what the heck? Like, <laughs> that's the kind of stuff that happens in third world nations. They rule with fear, iron fist. People can't do anything for themselves. And y'all got this like big fat chunky rifle as the CEO of your company because you know how to bah, 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 shoot anyone dead that doesn't agree with you because you know how to do witchcraft, right? You're third world. You're totally third world. you oozing Idi Amin. You're proper giving, you know, popot. I don't know. You're giving vibes of, of like serious dictators that are just always walking around with artillery. You're giving tank in the middle of a city because, okay, things have gotten deep now. It's no longer normal. You can't just go to the mall without seeing armed guards because your country's at war. You you have done that to South Africa. Oh, your third world. <laughs> You've done that to South Africa. <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> I am leaving. I have just explained to you now the sorcery. Okay, so there is like some buffoon in America. Out here, like, thoroughly imaginative that this here ultimately is going to work out for him. Be precisely because he's making an observation of a, of like a, what he would imagine is like a teenage girl living in the Tigre region. Like, the other day I was listening to a story. And by other day, I mean months ago, okay? Yeah, where it is that this 14-year-old girl was out here marrying some... 27 year old buffoon and the dad had sold her over because that was the only way for him to make money get some food even feed his livestock and so this chick at 14 was like just given to this odd ball and they showed the ceremony on i think it was was i watching it on like proper just a horror movie what, what, what like uh, was it we on or yeah we on i mean russia today is not on the on the internet anymore right it was we on yeah or, or Sky News, I can't recall, but one of these like news networks actually in these streets was covering it and they, they actually showed like, you know, the, the, the wedding ceremony of this little girl marrying this gigantic mammoth gargantuan man. He was 27, 14. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so this like a deadbeat in America. He sees me in a childlike state where it is that I'm dependent on everything and everyone. My country's fallen apart. It's ripped to shreds. And I've got a proverbial earthly father that's out here dealing with like livestock that's passing away and five other children that are also likely to pass away if this 27 year old rando does not like just take his daughter so you know they just gave her over like livestock just selling her like cattle clip her with a little bit of a tag on the ear and tell her you belong to this 27 year old pedophile mm. Yeah, so that guy's like a pedophile because I've I'm literally I've been reduced to the status of a child. He sees something glorious, beautiful, virgin like. Do you understand? And for him, it's like she's living in the horn of Africa. Now let me give him an American. He's American. He's like she's living in the horn of Africa. Yeah, proper. So this like Rando sees a pretty little like damsel in distress in the horn of Africa with a deadbeat dad that's prepared to sell her for some cow meat, cow fodder, whatever that might be. Okay, dude, like herbivores. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, so of course, he like keeps on going back to the drawing board, experimenting with, with, I hate him. I want nothing to do with him, but his witchcraft is taunting me like this precisely because. <laughs> I'm like a 14 year old in the Tigray region of Ethiopia, like, guys, like, <laughs> and some 
pedophile is like i want you i've got a little bit of money to show you and so apparently allegedly i'm just takeable you've you've made out of me that kind of thing so do you see how third world your sorcery is you're the ones creating arranged marriages out of people you're, you're thoroughly doing that you're properly like going out of your you are creating arranged marriages out of women that would never like seriously some gross oki are just salivating outside of her looking at her like she's some cinderella and she ain't got no choice she ain't got no choice i mean that's the kind of stuff that happens in third world countries y'all know that right like that, that the, the when a person when a woman ain't got no other choice but to be with some deadbeat douchebag thorough junkie of opportunism taking for granted that a woman cannot take care of herself and nobody else loves her and those kinds of random weird things when they happen normally legally without any police officers looking into it on some is this human trafficking yeah when stuff happens like that it's third world if there's no investigation about it it's third world because if stuff like that would happen in certain countries in the us in the uk somebody be looking into it on some chick are you okay are you safe somebody be following a child around like that story with that little girl that was found walking that that was basically accosted by some random pervert in an alleyway and she followed that th that whole situation behind and asked this little girl are you okay what are you doing with that girl is she you is you and this guy kept on saying this is fam this is fam until ultimately this little girl cried cried because she was being abducted as like right there and then this was in the united kingdom that this happened yeah stuff like that in first world country cry countries happens when they can see that there's like a a proper eight-year-old in the hands of like some 30 year old oak whoa like somebody gonna ask a question but in third world countries like if you are just living somewhere in the middle east mm, and you like a 12 year old child bride ain't nobody trying to ask no questions yeah nobody's gonna accost you if anything if you dare follow them around if you dare ask questions you might find yourself with a bullet in the head and there tends to be also no apprehension to criminals so you, your body's just gonna lie there like a cadaver on the side of the street not getting collected by coroners because government surfaces are not uh, government surfaces surfaces sorry are not sufficiently um around right so your carcass gets eaten by like scavengers like whatever you're a Korean, you're just there for the feasting of um animals that like to eat dead meat like <laughs> yeah third world countries child brides are a thing women being forced into arranged marriages that's a thing rape that never gets done anything about that's a thing malnutrition quashi like papa all different kinds of malnutrition uh injustice uh it's it just an, an excruciating income disparity where the wealthy are like five people and then everybody else is not even in the middle class no they're like this <laughs> Like when a country doesn't even have a middle class, you know there's a problem. Like there's no middle class, it's just poor, like dirt poor. And then there's the president. And the dudes are just sitting in a palace, like Sri Lanka, y'all know. Like you know what happened with the president? Ultimately it resulted in like a whole civil war, a whole uprising. The dude then has some people swimming in his pool and you know, swinging on his chandelier, on his chandelier. He had people swinging on his chandelier because he was like, yeah, countries where there's no, there's such an income disparity that there's only the rich, and the poor there's nothing in the middle <laughs> you guys are creating a failed state we're sri lanka now <laughs> i apologize i'm leaving <laughs> i'm really very sorry i can't you are third world your sorcery is third world you're creating unemployment in a country where people have a right to make a living under the constitution we are covered by the rule of law we can plead the constitution to protect ourselves from what people do under sorcery but because usually in countries where it is that things are falling apart there tends to be some kind of canons like legislation written down on paper that you can find somewhere in some archive but don't nobody care <laughs> don't nobody care it's not like there's no law in the tigray region of ethiopia a horn of africa it's like it's not like there's no law in gaza it's not like there's no law in sri lanka it's not like that you get my point there are laws it's just that don't nobody care there are laws just don't nobody care but like when your government start ignoring laws yeah you guys are like that you you're exactly like that you you properly like there are laws governing your country i mean let's just look at the bill of rights hmm? the constitution of the republic of south africa act 106 is it or 108 of 1996 that's what's good yeah how about we look at section two which is the bill of rights talking about how it is that all that which you are doing to me i've got rights yeah like you have disenfranchised me like in a most poignant capacity you have taken away from me an ability uh to 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 earn a living to basically just make an honest citizen out of myself like listen okay the reason why even unemployment laws were created like never mind affirmative action in order for um retribution after apartheid happened but also all different kinds of other 
laws, even that one in the constitution, where it is that people have a right to make a living, it was in order to block, eradicate people functioning as barriers to entry into the workforce that they might, I guess, eliminate over time or reduce the unemployment rate. There is a reason why our Labor Relations Act is fashioned in the way that it is. Our labor laws are some of the most lenient in the world. It's near and impossible to fire a person in South Africa without having to go through some hard knock red tape. It's extremely bureaucratic, do you understand? The laws of this country severely protect employees, even like proper, you will struggle to fire a deadbeat that gotta go. Like some oki that rocks up in the office, sleeps for 24 hours on their desk over and above being there for eight hours they managed to within that eight hours sleep for 24 hours and then they go home all that they are doing every single day is punching in their access card they never come for meetings they never uh, are on time with deliverables everything of their sucks they they've got to go through such a, an onerous process to get this person fired like first written warning second written warning gotta be counseled all that jazz you would sit with him like oh you therapist on a couch but why is things like are you okay do you need a shrink oh, 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 oh. then only can you enter embark on some kind of a process to get the person suspended appending a dismissal and work then on getting them dismissed and even after getting dismissed they can go to the ccma and the company has to spend resources with the ccma to basically uh, you know substantiate why it is that this guy had to go yeah and if at all there's like a small little loophole that this guy can find here it is that a company is paying 12 months salary or they have to reinstate him or it's just rough to get rid of people in this country it is no wonder hr is so corrupt working with management to essentially control a law that is uncontrollable that's what it is because it protects employees and you know why the, why, why the government did that after apartheid ended it was to make sure that it became really super duper hard to just fire people therefore striking like gong you know that thing that you go to the arcade and you hit it and it goes like ding and it hits that like thing at the top and you've like won a bullseye yeah for unemployment they, they, they just they didn't want that ding gong thing hitting for unemployment the rate was ridiculous but unemployment in this country has only gotten worse ever since then like proper it has not gone down it has not declined if anything it has climbed steadily following which it is starting to look exponential now hey we are a, a failing economy our status is junk we we are just ridiculous right now as a country having come from apartheid and now it's like 30 years in democracy and yet literally it's like there's nothing at all that we can look at to be like okay so this is like greatly improved significantly we are doddering about like a geriatric we are struggling to walk we are crawling and even then we're likely just still on our bellies never mind crawling the way that situations are just so bad why are we still an emerging market why are we still third world as south africa why are we not africa's leading economy why are we only africa's most industrialized why is nigeria above us that does not make sense but it is what it is We've got all these power cuts and everything like your sorcery did that you have comprehensively ignored people's human rights in the country you've ignored the laws of this land you have gone on right ahead to go via this like double up weird like underhanded shoddy look under a rock shake a tree methodology in order to get your bread buttered on both sides have your cake and eat it too in your own little unique narcissistic corner of the planet when nothing else nothing else affects you nothing else affects anything like proper you are the silo human being that has no reverberating effects on the rest of the human race your activity does not produce equal and opposite reactions your actions have no opposite nor equal reactions you imagine that you can operate doing sorcery against your countrymen in a vacuum and not actively tip some kind of strange financial illiteracy vacuum what, what is this a domino you you don't think that you're, you're tipping some kind of econo economy collapsing domino like somebody do give me an understanding as to what's going on over there which is i've been saying it like for a minute y'all need to be regulated i mean claiming the living daylights out of your constitutional right indeed again the bill of rights which apparently covers only you but not me that you've got a right to your freedom of religion however within that right you are lambasting everybody else's rights everybody else's rights so you use this witchcraft in order to mess with whatever it is that our presidents have been planning on eradicating in unemployment I mean, when you cast a spell on a person's career to get all like lamb based that you're taking away equal opportunity from people that were awarded equal opportunity, especially because of their skin color, <coughs> thanks to EE laws and all that jazz, you have just taken 10 steps back and one step forward. And so now there's like all this like hatred on the ground, inequality like no man's business, white people mad, however unprepared to speak about it, lest they should get called racist and everybody else just looking at you wagging their heads. You're third world. 
you have maintained your Africa in a very African me type state. You just stayed African like, you know? Just always suffering from Kwashi Yoko or something. Your belly like that big fat chunky stomach. Even though there's like, I don't know, 12 pounds, kilograms, 28 kilograms of chicken in your refrigerator, but somebody's gonna be suffering from Kwashi Yoko despite all that protein. That's you. Yeah, you've got like a, a bag of narchies just hanging out. Hanging out in your refrigerator. Haven't touched them in like five days, but somebody's gonna die from scurvy. Somebody's gonna die from Ricky. It's like y'all need to get like that's you. That's you. You're the only ones out just shopping at Woolies. <laughs> you're the only ones out just shopping at Checkers, shop right wherever. You're the only ones that not having like to feed your bodies with a whole bunch of starch every single day without there being meat. No balanced diet. I mean, thoroughly speaking, you 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 think that you can do that to a country, making sure that people eat beans and rice while you've got kilograms upon kilograms of chicken, ribs, etc. in your refrigerator. Peep those people of which have been placed in that position because you third world talibani like rifle carrying wannabe presidents have just robbed entire communities like what are you doing <laughs> of employment therefore infringing a basic fundamental constitutional right in the name of you exercising yours to a religion it's not regulated i keep saying that witchcraft needs to be regulated because of the fact that it's a spiritual means it's quite dangerous i mean it, it can be weaponized it's mind control it's theft of autonomy it, it ought be frankly just in the hands of a few government officials it's like the alien conspiracy in america you know how they held it tight and every so often even denied that people who claimed to have had experiences with aliens yeah had them like writing them frankly as like loony bin people until the other day david grush rocked up and told us in a congressional hearing that oh they live these alien biologics among us yeah confessed it like only now in the 21st century but before then there were these like conspiracies just ruminating in the sky mm. tightly held secret by a government because they realized that this is a thing that could cause mass dis eruption or distraction of the human race it, it it would cause fear it's the kind of stuff that can create you know a little bit of a shaking on the earth this i mean it's extraterrestrial we don't know it how do we study it how do we even, we even begin to wrap our heads around it you know how people are when they start to panic goodness we're going to be dealing with the purge like we're going to have people looting we're going to have anarchy so we can't just tell them that yeah totally there are discs in the sky unidentified aerial phenomena at the time flying objects and inside there are alien biologics it's a whole thing new mexico totally we found some aliens in there we found aliens i see dead people like in the sixth sense, sixth sense. Yeah, they finally confessed it because there's just, I don't know, too many witness accounts going on around, just like with Jesus Christ. So therefore, I mean, when you just can't deny something, you can't deny it. Plus, we are living in an era and an age of so much spiritual activity going on all over the show that people are less inclined today to be freaked out about such um, discoveries. Back then, they were a lot more modest, you know, with understanding. Ha! Now, everybody just knows everything. People don't get scared when they see ghosts in their lives. If anything, they channel them crying out loud i uh, just seeking out mediums and why not to talk to some dead grandmother they go out of their way to like chant over graves in order that people in there might do stuff for them so seeing as the human race is less timid about spiritual affairs yeah sure they live among us these aliens that say it the david grish that say it the congressional hearing in america that say it those guys mm. so here in, in in south africa that that what you guys you need to realize witchcraft is it, it, it ought to be like the new mexico alien invasion proper like speculation aren't you creating restaurants with ufo bulbous heads for waiters and waitresses that they buy at a costume store because it's like a, tro a tourist attraction for something that may or may not be true may or may not be true because it's a tightly guarded secret by the government sorcery ought ought be that in every country on the earth because it is a, a a tool of mind control it is something that definitely works it is spiritual it affects activity from the spirit realm in the physical and there is an invisibility as to who did it in the grand majority of cases that there guys is a biological weapon it might as well be a nuclear explosion it is an it is an it's a weapon of mass destruction do you understand what i'm saying witchcraft is ought to be viewed as a weapon of mass destruction but they've been they've just left it out to roam these streets like oxygen and so i mean of course the world is literally coming to a blistering end because of it people are walking around in these streets literally with an excruciating mental illness because they just won't let the the, the magic wand go they won't down it they won't chill take a pill a chill one recline their chair and watch something on the television they won't do that they have awarded witchcraft to lay james and lay jones without regulating it 
I have never for the life of me understood why it was never in the prerogative of any nation to regulate witchcraft. Guard it closely because of what it can achieve. Why was it not foreseen how this thing could potentially literally decimate a nation if it landed in the wrong hands? How did they not see that? And the sad thing about it is it's so cheap. Like if you drive down William Nicol, ne? or if you are on ramping onto William Nicol from the M N1 highway, right? Yeah, like proper on those like silver barriers. There's like, you know, those ones that are like lace, cr not like lace, like Simba chippies. They've got that crinkle cut look. Anyway, whatever. <clears throat> there are these like things in the spirally whirly things that you can barely read because they're inside the spirally whirly thing that say they Primpec lost lava. Oh my goodness, like for real? Like penis enlargement. Oh my goodness, like for real? Like proper stuff that is obviously witchcraft related starting to do this a whole bunch of them on william nickel those of you who don't understand where william nickel is i shall describe to you that you might gauge exactly what we're talking about over here that's why i say these people that think that they're classy these snobby keys eh? out here doing like posts on twitter after getting a million bucks from a satanic ritual with people then glamorizing what they are they live in their neighborhood it's a high-end neighborhood it is a luxury neighborhood it is an upmarket neighborhood William Nickel is an on-ramp to Four Ways, Four Ways, which is part of Santon. Santon of which is the wealthiest district in Africa, not even South Africa. It is the wealthiest city in Africa. Santon City. That's what's good. Yeah. Okay. Very well. Johannesburg is a city that holds a region. It's a region within Johannesburg, right? Yeah. Mm. Uh, so if you are living in Santon, you are living in opulence in comparison to many Africans that's what's good it's that neighborhood it's that neighborhood and so when you are on ramping onto william nickel you are anticipating therefore uh, sorry when you are posting advertisements on william nickel you are anticipating therefore to be speaking to who the wealthy or those that are very ambitious zealous for such a lifestyle as that you are talking to people who what's the word that i am looking for over here they, they are aspirational to be in that niche they, they see themselves there one day. They got dreams. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or they've already made it. They've already arrived. Mm. And yet, they're the ones that are being advertised to bring back lost lava. I promise you, like, I, I perhaps maybe I am underestimating the reality of this, but on William Nickel was where I see these bring back lost lava posters. I have not seen them on 14th Avenue, which is further down, not as opulent a neighborhood, but it's middle class too. I have not seen them on uh, Hans Stratum. Well, Malibong. Well, can't believe I'm still calling it Hans Stratum. Okay. Um, I, yeah, maybe the Bayers and the Deer. Maybe I might have seen one or two there. But like, it's almost as if though these people are targeting those who have aspirations for wealth or are wealthy because they understand the rapacity of man. It's such that they will want to manipulate everything in order to acquire things. And it is likely those that are wealthy or those that desire to be wealthy that are going to be more then likely we're happy to contact some random strange sango my advertising who lives somewhere in a house in Bryanston. It's just ridiculous. That is this country. So I mean, when these spells, when when this nonsense is in the, in the hands of anything and anyone, when anybody can contact a sango to bring back lost love, a mind control a woman to be with you or a man to be with you. Why is the president of the country not seeing it fit to essentially regulate this that they might guard it closely given that it's the kind of stuff that yields coercion and coercion in romance yields rape rape of which is gender-based violence and gender-based violence of which is south africa's like main thing it's a big issue this country is the worst one to live in as a woman we've got like femicide for like breakfast lunch and dinner it's our thing like the the country that is south africa statistically is the worst one to live in as a woman we're the ones that are just butchering some feel butchering females we keep giving them two feet breaking teeth and everything south africa is the worst country to live in as a woman so i mean you would imagine that bring back lost lava posters on william nickel would cause concern for cyril ramaposa on some if she doesn't want to go back then why not? And again, why are you trying to force her to come back into your space? This man is trying to mind control a woman to be with him because he could not prosper to convince her to get back together with him by just calling, buying some flowers, going out of your way to put your best foot forward and apologize or whatever. An apology didn't work. So now you're trying to force a woman to be with you by making her a zombie, a, a, a mental case, essentially unable, loss of autonomy altogether to think for herself and then find herself in a relationship with a man. Do you not see, how, how do you not see that this could result in 
some kind of gender-based violence. It's, it's like uh, in, in, in culpable homicide. Um, uh, what is this? Uh, it's not a balance of probabilities, but beyond... No, it's not even a beyond a, really, a reasonable doubt, but um, the reasonable man test. Yes. Uh, the reasonable man test has it that. Could the reasonable man have foreseen that a particular outcome could happen? Could you have foreseen it? So if at all an event could successfully be foreseen as happening just based on the probability so it is a balance of probabilities thank you just based on 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 a balance of probabilities and if at all the chance the odds of that probability are at a certain height that person is guilty for culpably doing a particular thing so therefore when that girl ends up murdered when that woman i i had a man slap me with bring back lost lover yours truly has been stricken with that that ominous fool in america is trying with bring back lost lover lost lover but my ex-boyfriend also slapped me with bring back lost lover could the reasonable man have foreseen that upon karabo saying no because <laughs> she got born again hallelujah so therefore all these weapons formed against me don't prosper i was able to say no thank you i still don't want you mm. could a reasonable man a reasonable president not have foreseen therefore that an a bitter man that failed at buying flowers a bitter man that failed at apologizing a bitter man that failed at creating basically a a, 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 a really good case for why Karabo should return, a bitter man that failed at that, could you not then foresee that upon his bitterness, yielding no fruit in even controlling this woman's mind with spirits to come back, that this could result in yours truly's life today? Could you not foresee that a man that just wouldn't take no for an answer to a point of using witchcraft to bring a woman back could actually incarcerate her like proper put briars, fetters, change, jail cells around her for a whole decade making sure that nobody looks at her. I'm just singing Jadena's Bambi Bambi ba ha 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 my dear my dear my dear I love you so very much and no man is ever gonna love you my dear type of man to tell you you're gonna leave your inner casket do you not see how bring back lost lover can yield Jadena proverbially of course the kind of man that is actually trying to gate crash a woman's wedding actually trying to prevent it wreaking havoc out your proper like you know stabbing some tires of the just married car because Bambi, you are not going anywhere. Do you not see how that kind of man could eventually kill a woman? Why do you not see law-making system of South Africa that just unfettered witchcraft, bring back lost lover, could have potentially contributed to gender-based violence in the country? Guys out here slapping Bambi with bring back lost lover and then Bambi doesn't come back and then, you know, he's crashing the wedding by crashing the woman's future. Don't you see it? My dear, my dear, my dear. You're gonna be mine and nobody's gonna love you. Oh, Bambi, you're so perfect. Bambi, you are my beauty. And nobody will have you, only me. Otherwise, you will die. Do you not see? Bambi, Bambi, ba. Out of Bring Back Lost Lover, you ought. Because those are the balance of probabilities all up in this girl. So, why is witchcraft not regulated? Why is it not a tightly guarded secret by the government? Why? Why is it that there is no council of whatever... Council of Covens over South Africa, regulating what are the spells that can be done. And if you do these kinds of spells, frankly, you're breaking the law. I mean, so you claim it's a religion, right? Yeah, every human right has got human responsibility, just like God's sovereignty has man's responsibility involved therein. Yeah, with every human right, according to the constitution of this country, the Bill of Rights, Section 2, we, all of us, must be responsible with those human rights. You can't just harass them, you can't just them base it, throw them out of context. Like for instance, with the right to a freedom of expression, you can't just actually be walking in hate speech. You have to be responsible, do you understand what I'm saying? With those human rights. You can't just harass people verbally on the street, emotionless buffoon, out here wreaking havoc in some innocent people's lives. You can't just do that. On that day, you might find yourself lambasted by the Equality Court. That's what's good. For slander, that's what's good. Mm. So. Who in the world is out you regulating the right to a freedom of religion, many of the religions of which involve spiritual practices that manipulate people's brains, stealing autonomy to achieve an end, witchcraft, ubungoma, all that jazz, does that. It's a mind control tool. It's a mind control tool, like in the worst way, making bambies out of men, making bambies out of women, jadenas out of men, and vice versa. It is the thing that has wreaked havoc in the South African economy. I can't say that enough. I'm leaving. This here is third world. I, I can't. Third world grabby, muddy, like what in the world is going on with this random strange buffoon that bewitched me to age, to like the age of 65, like overnight. He, I like they dig in. 
You know, hey, what's with that ticking chicken? Like something needs to explain to me what's up with that stupid woman. We guess she's demon possessed, but the only reason why she got to that height of demon possession is because South Africa told her you have a right to bewitch Karabo until she looks 90 at only 40. Like proper, you have a right. You have a constitutional right to practice as much dastardly witchcraft as you want. We are not deceived as to what it is that is involved in sorcery. All of these rando buffoons that apparently allegedly are regulating certain sections within the witchcraft industry, shall we call them that, are only focused on like human sacrifice rituals. Yeah, only because a human sacrifice ritual that is done in a ritual killing is an actual physical breaking of a law. We have, uh, so it's criminal laws and also within the constitution we have a right to life. Within the constitution we have a right to life. So I mean when the police are actually investing, uh, investi investigating a ritual killing, they're investigating a physical murder. What then of the person that passes away in a vehicle accident, preceded by that vehicle accident, was a ritual done by their cousin in a human sacrifice ritual, stabbing some things in the mirror? Gananana! Because he thinks he's like, I don't know, Dombo in Bloodspot. Brother, like, super villain. Yeah. Stabbing some mirrors. Next thing, auntie's dead in a car crash. That's a human sacrifice ritual, but guess what? There's no smoking gun. There's no dripping knife. He was not there at the scene of the accident, plus there was no tempering that there was no foul play visible on the vehicle to evidence that this person lost control of their car because somebody tampered with it the person just was driving on a rainy day and hit a truck because of vision issues unable to see and it looks like just a regular car accident how tragic auntie died but somebody knows that um, <laughs> there was a human sacrifice ritual the auntie that gets a brain aneurysm the one that doesn't wake up in the morning after having a heart attack while sleeping yeah he knows it wasn't natural causes, it wasn't an aneurysm, it wasn't a heart attack, it was a human sacrifice ritual. Yeah, there's no smoking gun, there's no fingerprints, nothing, there's no investigation that can be done here, there's no teams that can come in, forensics, labs and everything investigating DNA at the scene, because ain't nobody there other than the dying auntie from a heart attack. That is an infringement of the human right, the constitutional right to life, and of course you're breaking all other different kinds of criminal laws in so doing. But ain't nobody going to prison for it. Ain't nobody. I, I don't get it. Like, I, like, proper guys, this here makes sense to me. Don't know about y'all. It just makes sense to me. Witchcraft should be regulated because of what happens therein. So don't come tell me about these uh, police officers and whatnot everywhere investigating children who are sacrificed, body parts taken, in rituals. Yeah, of course, the child has already been killed. The heart has already been harvested. But what about the person that dies in a suicide that was actually murdered by suicide? It was not their thoughts that came into their heads to end their lives. They were pushed to that place. All the women that find themselves dead in driveways trying to leave some dude because bring back lost lover did not work. How in the world do you not see that the gender-based violence statistics of the country are, are, are neatly tucked behind? Insistence with sorcery. Sorcery of which causes demon possession in people so they become irrational. And upon, and not never mind irrational only, but also entitled. And because of the fact that they are using spiritual methodologies, their entitlement is ever more narcissistic. And so when it doesn't happen, more so do they just feel irritated that, goodness, you're gonna do what I'm saying you're gonna do. So boom, bang, bang. Shut me down, bang, bang. I hit the ground, bang, bang. That awful sound, bang, bang. My baby shot me down. Boyfriend, I'm your killing girlfriend. Yeah, you, you can't see that witchcraft has something to do with that. Like this stuff needs to be regulated but you know what i'm naive am i not because mm. i'm living in some pipe dream like life land like la -di da zombie state uh, a bit of a trance like catatonia that really garabo it's naive for this ecosystem you're, you're in a wrong frequency i am an alien so journeying to heaven that's justice for me that's what it looks like i guess we can only wait for the millennial reign of jesus christ for the day where it is that witchcraft will never be never mind be regulated but it'll be outlawed altogether and if you get busted doing it suffer the witch not to live goodness like literally die suffer not the witch to live the righteous reign of christ is where it is that he's going to be fulfilling his law on the earth so if you get busted are you in a cave like the witch at endor doing strange stuff die dirty rat die Ain't nobody gonna be able to carry on doing any of that. Those that are insistent are going to get busted, caught real quick and immediately apprehended. But before then, countries are not gonna see the need to regulate something so incredibly destructive as this in their legislation. I do not understand why witchcraft is not regulated in never mind South Africa, but Africa. It is no wonder we're so third world. Our countries are literally falling apart because we cannot succeed. It, we, we've got perforated buckets. Do you know what I'm saying? Perforated buckets. Perforated buckets. Buckets with holes in them. Pour in some water, pour in some sand, and it all just comes out on the other side. Yeah. I'm just trying to do a special thing, but nothing really works. Because sorcery are perforations. 
you are trying to improve employment statistics and then you have got a whole bunch of workforce employees in the South African market bewitching their colleagues. I'm sorry, that's a perforated bucket. It's a perforated bucket. You are trying to eradicate gender-based violence, but you've got a whole bunch of people bringing back lost love, a perforated bucket. I can't say it enough. All these things that are just counterproductive to a nation's health. It's a state capture. Like, I don't, like, why is it not regulated? Why is it not regulated? I call it a state, a state capture because it's literally an interest group that does not have the best interests of the country that is a breakaway and is clandestine and is thoroughly trying to coup the actual government. It's the Taliban. It's the kind of government official that's out here roaming around the union buildings with a gun. Like, whoa, not even Cyril Ramaphosa does that. Like, he just doesn't. He's got uh, um, a detail of security around him. That's how presidents in normal states are. But go to Afghanistan, go to Gaza, and find leadership there and see what it looks like. Find leadership in what you call this place, Haiti, eh? Where gangs are running the show. I mean, proper. When you're president or oh, you're municipal council or the person that is running your particular region is, is carrying like just carrying like what the heck like what this is the thing and he's just walking around like that so he's like a bulldog like every like one full step go 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 like godzilla scary dude don't get on his bad side lest trigger happy rando boo knock you dead and then eat your flesh while they're at it because apparently allegedly there are cannibals there too yeah that, that stuff like that only happens in crazy state captured countries and south africa is under a severe state capture by sorcerers Sorcerers, y'all think you're great, but you're third world, you're proper third world, you are like an advanced primitive, kind of like bordering on Neanderthals, like that's what you are. You are primitive because you do not have the best interest of your nation at heart, you don't. Even my desire to leave this country, <laughs> travesty. I never wanted to leave South Africa, not even in the slightest. I didn't even want a holiday home away from home, like I was just so happy with this country. I was only ever going to travel overseas for fun for two weeks and come back home. I, like I so loved this country that I didn't even want to relocate for the sake of gaining international experience on the job. Because I was like, really, if South Africa can pay me rents for the rest of my life, I'm good. That's how much of a patriotic spirit I had for this country. Hibatu. Now I, I let I prop up my footsteps. I'm a ghost. Like I'm a phantom in this country. I've already left. My spirit has left. All that you see now is a body. Lenyam. That's all that's in this country. But my heart is elsewhere. I have already soared like a bird out of this land. Yeah. When you do that to a country, <laughs> when you grab some of its most loyal and patriotic citizens and make them want to run out, or when you cause them to make like a dead body out you having a spirit leave before the actual body leaves, when you do that to your countrymen, some of the most loyal, baddest, biggest supporters of your land, <sighs> I apologize, it's a state capture. It's a crime state. It's Haiti. It's being run by gang members out here rolling around in machine guns in front of kids at schools just patrolling <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> yeah but like you see you don't see that kind of military activity in the country because those military booted soldiers with machine guns walking around in front of some children on a playground are their dads and their moms they are their next door neighbors they are regular janes and joes because don't nobody see their invisible machine guns you are shooting down bah, 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 bah. Anyone you can. Goodness, like there was this complex where I lived in the clubhouse. I met a chick there. We discussed issues in our units. Seeing as stuff was falling apart for a new complex, it was unacceptable. We both, you know, vented our frustrations and we became what I would imagine fast friends. And within four days, I'd already gotten a dream of her bewitching me in her own personal capacity. So she had a shrine in her house. Four days. She meets me in the clubhouse. So I, I mean, like <laughs> if a woman she's only known for four days was already at the mercy of her sorcery. Can you imagine her sister, her brother, her cousin, her colleagues, her classmates? Can't nobody breathe in the presence of that terrorist. That is South Africa. People walking around with invisible machine guns shooting anybody at MTN. I had a colleague. We became fast friends too. Yeah, new um, employee for the organization. I'm a project manager. She is a resource in marketing, a segment manager, only there for like five seconds. And within two weeks, I'm actually getting nightmares about how it is that she's literally ripping the rug of my career from under my feet. Two weeks you've known me and you've made a determination that I'm not going to get anywhere in life. I mean, these are people carrying hand grenades into offices. At MTN where I used to work, there was a gun safe. People could not go into the actual working building with their weaponry they had to leave it in the gun safe yeah so when you went through those um little beep beep beep, beep what do they call them security booths 
or whatever yeah if you went beep 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 and you had a, a, a weapon of course a licensed one they will tell you sir no hard feelings but you don't get to go into the office with that put your stuff in a gun safe mm. there was a gun safe at the beginning there was not even a single employee in the actual physical building with a gun no not one goodness but man oh man how people were out here carrying ak-47s pistols like nine millimeters like what dude in the spurt coming into the office and feeling you just get to your desk in the morning back off your colleague's head just like that cheeky thinks she's alive but she's dead because two months down the line there's going to be a disciplinary hearing that's going to cost her her job that happened to me I had a colleague that i was sitting right next door to some indian chick walked up in the office one day and was like Poof. goodness why didn't the gun safe go bb why didn't the gun like the bleeping machine register and then her grab that gun and put it in a gun safe in other words why is witchcraft not regulated in this country anywhere at all never mind this country it should be regulated this way across the lands and in africa it's a whole big fat chunky problem this witchcraft issue and so it has made a third world continent be maintained in a third world status for literally much too long we've got a wealth of natural resources a wealth of intelligence we've got some of the biggest and baddest people coming from this continent not a big fan i'm not a feminist i don't like the ideology but we can appreciate the intelligence of chimamande adiche right african can appreciate elon musk can appreciate even though doja cat was raised in america she's half south african look at all that talent you can appreciate charlize theron's talent um i could like there are so many people so many people that come i'm listing now the ones i guess that are largely from south africa but all across the continent of africa there are some pretty genius like boffin people that get produced by this continent trevor noah get produced by this continent and they just go get vomited to the west they get taken up the african diaspora keep on complaining politicians in this uh, continent keep on lamenting african diaspora african diaspora so many africans leaving what is with the skills exodus out of africa oh guys come on stick around we need to build up our, our, our continent we need to build our africa yeah yeah i agree i do i do but like anybody out you building anything when you've got perforated buckets from here to timbuktu People are leaving because they're frustrated. Like, proper, you will literally be born with the biggest and baddest brains in the game in Africa. And somebody will insist on wasting them. Insist. Like, you will be a whole genius. And you wonder why there, there is no, like, documented or recorded Einstein that is black in history. Africa. It's because you keep on bewitching them into oblivion. If only you strove and actually protected your own and insisted on getting them seen, they would have gotten seen. Look at how much when you riot all the time, ultimately everybody riots on your behalf. But you are writing over all the bad things. You're writing over dudes that don't deserve a riot. You are writing over George freaking Floyd. But you don't riot over your Einsteins. Why? Because you shoot them dead right before they can leave high school. Or when they start to appear like they might become a Steve Jobs one day. You then are like, I'm sorry, Jabu, Shmabu, you're going nowhere. In the office right there. So, I mean, really largely, black people, some of the biggest reason, reasons why I don't stand with the whole black culture movement is because you're so defeatist that I, th I believe that if it was not for your defeatism, much of the laments, the moans, the groans, the growlings that you have would not even be existent. Because here it is that all of your screams have caused, like, shaking knees, wobbly knees in white people that are prepared to be stood on frankly i think they're doormats they're being bullied by a whole bunch of black people that are insisting now that black supremacy must happen now that we've already endured white supremacy in the past white folk out here properly sucking up to an angry mob of black people the fact that they're sucking up and therefore becoming the tenement of what would be uncle tom's for their own people groups yeah says that if you had tried hard enough harder and actually without having any hypocrisy in your bones to proliferate the black agenda in a way that displayed that in and of yourself you were interested in proliferating it you would have long ago gotten all different kinds of leadership positions everywhere whenever you cry and you lament you complain they cast people in movies that are black where historically it was just a white male archer getting casted your, your laments your protests have achieved that meaning that if only you had protected each other and actually cared to proliferate the black agenda you'd be so far ahead in this game that you would see no need anymore to just keep complaining all the time anymore and bullying white people i probably can't deal like your third world your Af i can't you produce 
do you know like africa is so famous on tiktok because of all the talent that comes from this place but then somehow we're third world somehow we are just not rising up uh, to, to, to the occasion we keep on getting taken up by western nations those of us that get like found it's like we get busted thank you we get caught like oh i'm afraid to come out of the ward because uh, mm -mm. you're wearing a teeny weeny inty btl yellow polka dot bikini when your talent gets found because somebody did not be with you first before you left you get caught oh i came out of the water when you've got a a youtube not a youtube but that too but like some kind of social media that's gonna blow you up next thing you're actually on an airplane chilling in the fuselage somewhere in the middle of it to america you're going to europe because now they want you for their own they want to boost version their economy using you you keep getting stolen those of those of us who get who are afraid to come out of the water uh -uh. Because you're a teeny weeny into being yellow polka dot bikini. Those of us that mistakenly get busted. Because we get busted. Because according to Africans, ain't nobody, you, you ain't going nowhere. You are going nowhere. So when you do go, when you get found, when you get discovered, it's like, I'm wearing a teeny weeny into into yellow polka dot bikini that I wore for the first time today. Tell me this. How many black Africans have been snatched up in the entertainment industry by the diaspora? Don't tell me about Cullens. Don't tell me about Trevor Noah and Tyler. Blacks. <laughs> hey, I'm still waiting. Crickets. Grr, grr, grr. Because they're the ones that when they finally land in the US having gotten scouted to go there. They were afraid to come out of the water. Uh -uh. Like if you think about Kabi Lame, he was already living I think in Italy. He was not discovered here in these streets in Africa. You are crazy. Unless of course you are a whole sorcerer. That's the only way that you're going to protect yourself from African ridiculousness. Those that are hopping out, coming out of the water, are coming out because they're using witchcraft. But like, really, you do all that and then you go to hell in the end. Why is this stuff not regulated? You're crazy. Like there's like random cheeky trying to prevent me from coming out of the water. Ah, ah. Teeny weeny inzy pinzy yellow polka dot bikini that I'm actually wearing by simply trying to get spotted out there. Yeah, mm, that's what's good. Mm, why did she bewitch me? To make sure that I age overnight. <laughs> like, like, why is some family member trying to keep me in a grain? Like what are you doing? But it's not regulated. It's not regulated. It's a weapon of mass destruction. It's, it's properly a weapon of mass destruction. But it's not regulated. Law makers that fashioned the constitution ought to have seen. That this here human right of religion. Spiritualities all different kinds of them. Hmm. It could result in a bit of a, a, a spiritual cantankerousness, like a, a bit of a, a, a Fukushima nuclear reactor problem. Where if you don't cool it like real soon, we, we, we might as well just move out of Japan. Let's just get out. Tokyo gone. <laughs> Why did you not see that Johannesburg would go? Why did you not see that Pretoria would go? Why didn't you see that Cape Town would go? Why? Why did you not see that despite the fact that in now that the election, the DAs are doing all these adverts, ANCs are doing all these adverts, don't nobody care when your bucket is perforated? I don't even vote anymore. Why? Because I've been disenfranchised. What is going on with my life? Why do I have to get out of South Africa in a teeny weeny inzy beansy yellow polka dot bikini that I wore for the first time today? Why is that even a thing? Why do I have to get busted out of South Africa like an immigrant? Out here about to become a refugee. Why do I gotta like make like pick panther dating 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 Oh snap a witch found me bah yo keep your country I apologize Give my swabby Give my swabby Like I'm I'm really sorry like I apologize profusely I am not staying I am not staying this here says pool of darkness that disregards people constitutional rights like, I have a right to life. How many death spells have been cast on me by covens in this country involving some pretty prolific men, some of whom are in the law and, um, what is this, are in the legal profession. Lawyers. Judges. And yet you out here, humiliating the living daylights out of my, uh, guys, like, the injustices. Like, you know, when a law, a country has a law, but don't nobody care, you're a failed state. When a country has a constitution and it's beautiful, entrenched in the Bill of Rights, all these beautiful, like, freedoms that people have, but don't nobody care, sorry, you're a failed state. You're done for. It's only a matter of time before you get finished off. Why in the world? It's like Animal Farm. All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. All South Africans are equal, but some South Africans are more equal than others. All South Africans are covered by the Bill of Rights, but some South Africans are more covered by the Bill of Rights than others. So witches, you're more covered by the Bill of Rights than us. You have a right to your employment that you might not have it ripped underneath your feet. You have a right to your life that somebody might not just shoot you in the head and decide that, you know, you had to go. Eternity was one person empty and you had to just join them. 
already mm. every part, like education like a proper like a freedom of expression <laughs> let's talk about freedom of expression for a minute yes let's do that mm. uh, i'm here on youtube not only expressing my freedom of religion hallelujah i'm a christian but i'm also in so doing these videos also exercising my freedom of expression right yet there are people doing spells to block my ministry people are trying to silence me they want to put like red tape duct tape on my mouth <laughs> I got spells flying from all over the show, kicking me with a flying kick because they think they're Bruce Lee from South Africans, thoroughly trying to make me quit my ministry. That's witchcraft unregulated. I mean, if something is a crime, if done physically, why under heaven is it not a crime when it's done uh, spiritually? When you kill spiritually, it ought to have the same legal ramifications as murder in the physical. When you steal, it ought to have the same ramifications as theft in uh what do you call this like in waking space larceny whatever when you uh what is this um rip, like sabotage a colleague's career you're messing with the constitutional right to earn a living to make a living right that's what you're doing so therefore you have to have some kind of civil suit that succeeds against you because you can't always create a criminal case given that the matters are civil why aren't people winning lawsuits for, against witches that pulled rugs from underneath their feet like why why am i not owed millions for people messing with my career using sorcery it's because africa does not regulate it however if there was like you know guys when, when people when the law gets passed down it is in order to make people aware of what is wrong and what is right and it therefore creates fear in them to break the law even by, by god's standards he did not send us the law that we might honor it because inevitably we would break it but it was that we might know where we fall short that's why we go to christ to gain propitiation the law is created in the country to eradicate lawlessness or to minimize it but it's not to extinguish it because that's impossible it is to minimize it not entirely extinguish it and to create ramifications repercussions for those who dishonor it anyway just like with christ just like with the laws of moses just like with the gospel right there has to be punishment for dishonoring the law so what does the law achieve when it is handed down to the people it achieves restraint hello it achieves restraint it achieves thought it achieves second thought. It, it makes you trepidatious. It, it, you don't just hop into a bucket and do what you want to do, rando. You consider first, what is the likely outcome of this thing? So while regulating sorcery will of course not extinguish it from the country, it will certainly restrict it. It will restrain it. It will cause some people to second guess trying it out. It'll disincentivize people from doing it, especially, I mean, like, you know how with every human right, there is a limitation or a restriction. They have to be written down, like limitations or restrictions on sorcery, like what kinds of witchcraft cannot be done. Now, it would be, of course, onerous to try and jot down every lost spell or bring back lost lava. Pegamina Pella, destroy the career. We can't just jot them all down, but what you can do is fashion them against the existing law of the country and say, if at all any witchcraft breaks any of the existing laws of the land, then it is prosecutable. prosecutable. Then due process applies to it. And if it is possible for us to, uh, if at all, uh, what is this? If we have evidence, if there is evidence in, quase, in, in place to display that this person did do this particular spell, then people can go to court with it. That's when then undercover police officers would, would be hired to essentially, essentially catch Sangomas in the act. I want to steal a job from Karabo. But then it's a police officer, it's an undercover police officer. If the Sangoma does the ritual anyway, they're facing prison time. People will therefore, the Sangomas will therefore, if at all they call themselves moral Sangomas because you know how they find them out there, they probably think that there are some among them who are moral. Mm. They will decide to tell a customer, get out. I don't do those kinds of rituals. I'm not trying to get in trouble with the law. They will have little plaques in their houses saying, a law abiding Sangoma. I don't do bring back lost lava that uh, contributes to gender based violence. I don't do human sacrifice rituals. I don't do ABC. So if you want those kinds of services, I'm not the one for you. I'm not the one for you. It would disincentivize people from testing certain spells. If at all the country's economy wants to grow, indeed as the country is planning to grow it, you cannot let witches continue to cast spells on their colleagues, bah, shooting them from the back of their head while they're sitting in the office. Next thing, two months down the line, the chick is actually facing a disciplinary hearing that she doesn't understand. Having lost a job 10 years later, she's still unemployed. Here it is that a perfectly viable intellectual citizen of a country that could have been an economic contributor is making zero rents. So now I'm gunning for pounds and dollars and euros and you are just trying to block me from going because you are thoroughly also messing with my right to life. I mean, do you not see how all this just kind of adds up to heinous 
decimation of a country by a state capture. It's not regulated, so it's destroying the land. And I'm leaving. It's third world. It's so third world. It's so guashiyoko, it's giving scurvy. It's giving rickets. It's giving even like HIV and shingles. It's got STDs, I'm sorry, it's got fur. And it's oozing pus. And it's giving RIP cadaver cold bed and cracked skull. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. South Africa, you can keep your little witchcraft barren land where your legislature is not even trying to legislate to a certain end, they're proper, to regulate it. I'm not saying get rid of it because then they would get rid of Christianity altogether. Uh, they would create a dogma, they would create a police state, they would create an unfree state when it comes to practicing of religion. In order for Christianity to thrive in a country, we've got to be reasonable to gauge that our countries have to have a, a right to a freedom of religions at all. Otherwise, Christianity will not thrive. So I would never ever purport for the elimination of witchcraft altogether, burn them at the stake type setup thing, even though deep down in my heart, that's what I want. I, I would not really purport for that, not on this time, not on the side of the rapture. Only Christ in his righteous reign is going to successfully eliminate witchcraft. But in the run up too, we can get some kind of a semblance of it as Christians, where it is that it gets a, a victory for us would be to regulate it in our countries. Regulate it. Regulate it in tandem with the law of the land. Basically saying, witches, you can't do spells that break the law. It's that basic. You can't b do spells that steal, that murder, that humiliate people's human rights. You can't do that. And if you do and you get caught, just like with all crimes, you will then go through due process. You will go through persecution. You will go through the whole thing. Not every criminal gets busted. Not every thief that steals bread gets caught. Not every money launderer gets busted. Some people go away scot-free. God will deal with them later on. So it is true that people will still keep on doing these rituals and they will die having gotten away with it. But there will be a reduction in the number of people who do it because to erect a law is to create restraint in the people. If you don't erect the laws, you create a purge heart. That's why in America, people are purging because they unlawed laws. But when you create laws, you create fear of consequences in people. And that's enough to reduce certain outcomes in their number, in their percentages, their probabilities. So if you want to increase unemployment, uh, again, employment, if you want to eradicate unemployment rate, if you want to uh, eradicate gender-based violence, if you, you get my point, you would have to regulate witchcraft because these people are just dastardly. Uh, yesterday I made a joke in the video that I was doing, saying that they're like, um, what do you call this? They, they, they're like a, a car that's just driving 240 kilometers down some road that has no cul-de-sac, no yield sign, no robot, no pedestrian crossing, no stop sign, nothing. Just going, 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 going. I also describe them to like a paragraph in gym that doesn't have any spaces in the middle, nothing. No space bar, no, 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 no underscore, no comma, no full stop. Just a blob of words in Jephila mixed together. No separating even paragraphs. Just yeah, and you expect it to be a coherent, grammatically um, sound essay. No, they have no punctuation and they also have no road signs. They just keep going incontinent. So, I mean, really, if they don't have those punctuation marks and those road signs, can somebody not erect them on their behalf? Can the government not legislate to put a punctuation mark somewhere? Somebody bring us a comma. We are in dire need of a hyphen. Somebody bring us a full stop and an underscore. We need a semicolon and a colon, but we don't have it right now. We need a space bar. We need an enter, something. Right now, we've just got to blow up. That's what these people are like. No self-control. It's written in God's word that like a bear robbed of its cub, so too is a person that lacks self-control. Shy and did 24 hours a day. It's also written in God's word that like a city without walls, so too is a person without self-control. These people have no punctuation and they also have no stop signs, no roadblocks, no metropolis, nothing. They just keep driving brrr, until they kill somebody. Why is nobody regulating it? Then again, maybe it's because politicians themselves give a loy. I can say, guys, you know what? I'm not doing this. But as for the random chiquita that bewitched me to age overnight i invite you to sit outside like you're watching a hunger games arena to see if i actually age as katniss everdeen okay i, I dare you i'm signing out in christ's name Quen k bye